Release the past and let it go. The past has no hold over you. This is a song that came in from the Holy Spirit and I put it on the community tab for you. Welcome, collective. We're going to make it into the first person, though, so I'm going to ask you to sing it with me today. Not now, but in your own time. It says, keep moving forward, and we're going to say, I release the past and let it go. The past has no hold over me. You're stepping into a new timeline, a new future. You have to cut cords of any past timelines. They're gone. Gonski. Because you're in a different vibration. And you have to thank everybody from the past and let it go. For your future awaits and it's successful. I've got the Starseed Oracle because there's a war going on in the galaxy with the um, Andromedans and the Draconians and the Pleiadians and Archangel Michael. So it goes a bit higher, like there's different levels here. So the Draconians are here and they've announced their king. So as star seeds of light, the light will consume the darkness. So as a timeline jump, we're moving into space time. So out of time and space and into space time. So space time invades our time. It's like eternity will invade our reality. It's one of those times I talked about with the coral spawning. That's like God saying the concentric circle, some are crashing in and we're getting all the downloads from all the past timelines, taking what we need and letting the past go. It has no hold over you. The past from this moment on. See, before I got the song, I was thinking of what Louise says. Louise, hey, wrap it up in the big pink balloon. I've got that in my 45 minute meditation. The past is in a big pink helium balloon. We're going to use indigo because we're in indigo month here. And say out loud, I now open to seeing the future. I now open to seeing the truth. Well done, star seeds of the light. This is you. You've got to trust. All right, so this is taking a leap of faith. This is being called. When you're called, you must obey. So this is about, for those of you who have positioned yourself, you need to be prepared mentally for this. All right, so you say, I'm going to just tell you, I listened to a sermon. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. But it was when Jesus went up to the, the, um, the guy at Gethsemane in the baths and he was crippled. And he said, would you like to, to be healed? And the guy started talking about the 38 years of not being healed. And Jesus was like, that was not the question or the answer. That's not where I'm at. So you're in the presence of the grace. The glory of the Shekinah is upon you. And it's never been so strong on the earth. Right? The light is invading the darkness. They think the darkness is invading us. Nah, it's the other way around. It's your light. So that's all your focus is on. The council of light are bringing more light. You've got to understand we're going into a timeline shift, a change of it's like bending time to suit we have to do this first because it says that the enemy can do this when he arrives down here so once michael and the band of Earth mercy angels i told you they're like militant precision they're armies and there's 12 legions of them at the disposal of yeshua so a legion there's 12,000 in a legion so how many angels is that? It's 144,000 angels for the collective. Jesus said to me once, he goes, that's not enough for you? I'm like, what? See the levels? So it's the council of light is activating you. And this is when I first started the Heart Dwellers. I started with Melchizedek, Kutumi. I always say Kutumi, but Kutumi and Kuan Yin. And now coming back, it's a few years later, Melchizedek was the first incarnation of, he was a high priest and the king of peace and a high priest. Never before had there been one. And Kuan Yin has a symbol in Reiki, making Reiki okay. It's powerful. It brings compassion, symbols of light. If you're wanting to be a light worker, when you activate the symbols, they're eternal. 
This is the Council of Light announcing your life purpose ignition. This is your initiation today. The past has no power over you. We're letting it go now in the big pink balloon or indigo and you just let it go as soon as you're ready and you put everybody in there that comes into your mind right now like a sandbag on your beautiful hot air balloon and you're throwing them out, getting lighter. Put it in the hot air balloon and let the helium balloon go when you're ready and just be really grounded and present and prepared. You have to position yourself for this supernatural eternity moment. This is when a lot of things are colliding and you're moving into a frequency where you become the ability for miracles to occur. Wow! Divine orchestration happens in the subtle realms. So the light is magnified. It's coming down. The light is inside you. Cannot go out. You're succeeding. You're moving forward. You're letting it all go. So when I say, are you ready for a miracle? You go, oh, well, I've been waiting for a miracle for 10 years. No. Jesus said, no, don't do that. How can you let that go? How can you let that thought go? You go, are you ready to be a millionaire? You go, well, you know, I've got to pay all these debts. I've got to do this. I'm like, I didn't ask you about your debt. I asked you, are you ready to be? <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting it. So this is what it's all about. It's about changing your mindset has to catch up to the new frequency. You've had to say no to things, people, places, situations, even the way you're thinking. This is what we're coming in today with, the way that, that we think. We're not in the supernatural realm in our mind. This is about opening the mind and that's what the Council of Light's doing. Look, this is what I said. It's Katumi, Melchizedek and Kuan Yin, initiates of those. We find out that Katumi brings the Kundalini fire. Like to me, it's amazing to look back and go, wow, I'm so glad I followed my intuition. So this is a sign for you to follow your intuition and you step, you go each step and it's like you unravel as you go. All right, people can't go with you. They're not at your level. That's not, it's not between you and them. It's between them and their creator and it's between you and your soul star. So there's stars. God's saying there's going to be a big star in the sky. Keepers of the earth. Movement. This is a movement into the new earth, into Gaia, into the new creation. This is what your mission is. This is why you came here, to be a stand of the light. If you're not here, the light doesn't exist. If we can buzz up the light in any way by activating Reiki symbols, by becoming Reiki attuned, getting more life force, getting more light, giving your heart to Yeshua HaMashiach and filling with the Holy Spirit and fire. Then you can be seen. You're the ones who are seen. You're lit up down here. You're like a firecracker. <laughs> firecracker. <laughs> so the keepers of the earth are being bestowed upon resources that come out of nowhere, like nowhere. This is why you can't talk it down because in your mind you can naysay it and you can cancel the manifestation even before it comes in. And that's what this reading is about today. To not allow anything to hold you back from your success and your happiness. Because it's a fight. We're in a fight here. Like That's what Michael keeps saying. We're fighting. We've got to bring our sword of truth to cut through all the dross. And it looks like, you know, it's not easy to say no, especially if you haven't said no to this energy. And then all of a sudden you have to say no to it and you realize it's all around you. It's a dishevelling moment of reality. But they're saying the, the council of light are here. The keepers of the earth are activating. I'm going to put this one out here. This is a very profound reading and we're coming from the fifth dimension. And this is why, because you didn't dim to fit in. This is a hard lesson. And sometimes you go through that cycle, you go, well, I let them go. I let that job go. Right? People that even left jobs because of that... Um, you know, moonshot, I call Jezebel juice, and now going back to the same place of employment and they don't need to take the Jezebel juice. So it was a good thing that they said no to it. You know what I mean? It's like they didn't dim to fit in. That's not easy. That's a hard. It sounds so simple, but it's not easy. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? 
This is where you care about other people's opinions of you. Like you care about what they think. Like this is when you're highly sensitive being as well. And when you're HSP or ultra sensitive, you pick up on a lot. And especially when you're going through your transformation, right? This is a very scary time because I don't fit in here. And then you look back on your whole life going, I really didn't fit in, fit in there. I tried to. Right? But I had this, they're showing me that, you you know, if you could visualise yourself having like this huge kick-ass satellite dish above your head, tuned into the galaxy, right? And you're just a little child. And the other kids are like, what's she doing? Let's go over there and get her like technology. So they start taking bits and then they, you know, throw it around and tell you that you, you didn't see that fairy. That's an imaginary friend. <laughs> This is when we were magical and younger, God showing me. You could see you had the second sight because you had no false belief stopping you. And this is what this timeline is calling for, right? For you to prepare for supernatural power. Do you believe in miracles? Do you believe in your Heavenly Father? This is a test of your belief and your preparedness because there's a lot of light at the moment. Why would there be needing a lot of light? Because when Michael finishes the war in heaven, it comes down. So there's no darkness in the third heaven anymore, right? They're fighting. It's Lucifer. He's going to fall. So he's going to fall into the most highest vibration of God's glory on the earth ever. And in that glory, in that light, we get lifted. This is how we create the new timeline. <gasps> wow, look, you get lifted. This is the whole collective. This is a collective awakening. No matter where you are, you're awakening to the next level. Like it's supersonic. I don't know how to explain it to you. Energetic upgrades, a new way of being, integration. This is also in your physical body because, you know, your DNA holds the vibration like I've told you before. Your body knows the trauma you've been through. We will carry trauma from the past life to be released. That's why it can be really intense, but in reality... It didn't, ha like they go, oh, you're just too sensitive. Well, you just overreacted there. And then that puts shame on you and guilt on you. It's like there's no such thing, especially on this channel, of being too emotional. Now, God showed me last night, he goes, you know, when you were the most emotional, and if anyone ever says that to you, like you're being over emotional, it's because they're being so cold and mean. And I was like, oh, yeah. If someone's that cold and mean to you, you're going to get upset and your heart's breaking. That's why. And of course, you're going to be emotional and see how the narcissist will put it back on you going, oh, you're too emotional. It's like, no, you're too cold and mean. Ah, so there's no here. You've superseded other people's opinions of you. This is the spotlighting thing where they put the spotlight on you. And in doing so, it has cleared the facets of your diamond. So this is your third eye connection to God, awakening, and you're being lifted up in the cellular of your body because the memory codes are being released of any pain or trauma held in your body. That's what causes illness. Like I know I've said it before, but I fully got it the other day with Jesus. I was like, what is that? He goes, well, people aren't grounded. He goes, so if they're not in the omnipresent moment of now, they cannot really be healed. But I will bring them in there if they talk, ask me and they will be healed. And I said, so how do you do that? <laughs> Listen to me. And he said, I take out the unforgiveness and the heart, the, the stone in the heart. So it all leads back to resentment in the heart. But when you have that trauma blocked in your body, it causes the illness. Again, we're learning that it's because the heart hasn't been healed. If the trauma is stored in the body, then the heart holds resentment for the trauma to be there. And the trauma is just energy. If you think of it as crystals held in the body with memory codes, you have the power to release it. And when you do, you get lighter. This is you flying up. All the sandbags are gone. So the sandbags could have names on them. You could take a pen and paper right now and you could write down anything that comes into your mind, any circumstance, any past person or pain. And then you could actually, you know, let it go because you get it down out of your mind into the etheric realm, it's called, onto the earth plane. And then you can decide, do you want to um, magnify it or would you like to release it? 
So today would be the day where you could burn it with fire. Write down anything that comes up and do a release fire releasing ceremony. I'm just going, I wanted to read this to you. Look, it's New Earth. We're in New Earth. I'm telling you, we're going. I did a video on the three parts of New Earth and I totally forgot about it. And then God brought it to me the other day. So it's New Earth or what they call um, the wilderness. Ancient star origins are activating. I don't know why they can't show me where it is. Oh, yeah, we want awakening. Let me know how you are, your name, location, what's happening in your area. I've right, got to keep um, watch on your children. Where is it? It's in alphabetical order. So it should be at the beginning. Oh, it's too much for that one. It's a too Are you ready for the future? Are you ready to keep moving? Are you ready for success? Would you naysay it? If you saw a bag full of $50,000, would you pick it up and run? Or would you go, oh, I need to take this. Does anybody, did you, did you drop this? Excuse me, should I take it to the police station? It's like some people, God's saying he's going to send his angels to you, even might walk up to you and give you a gift or give you a key to find the gift. So be open to that. There's earth angels about because we know the reptilians are about. So we're going to connect with the earth angels. You know, I can't find this. It's just too much, for Bella. It's too much. It's a domachi for me. It's just... Why isn't there like a contents? Answer the call. He awakening far out. I'm found it. Da -na -na -na. Must be an important message. Because after this awakening, it's the birthing of the new age completely. You are going through a period of awakening. Things are changing with, within you and at many levels. You are starting to remember ancient truths and discovering more and more about who you are and why you are incarnated. You might may find that you are experiencing past life flashbacks, seeing the invisible thread that is woven through all of life or even feeling the kundalini shakti rise through your body. From the base of your spine. This is a kundalini awakening. That's why Kutumi's here. It's safer to do it in the fire because that's what's under attack. It creates um, a high adrenaline rush in the blood if it's not done within the fire. The most important thing for this time is not to overthink it and to stay grounded. Share your experiences with like-minded souls while you consciously integrate the new you. Journal and pay attention to your dreams. You are remembering and your soul gifts are emerging. During the time of transition and awakening, you may be called to devote yourself to being of service. So it's about your purpose. There are ideas, truths, concepts, books and creations waiting to be birthed into this world. This is you. Ideas, truths, concepts, books and creations. Stay open to receiving them. Pulling this card may be a sign that you are here to birth one of these creations into the world. Or perhaps you are being called to make a shift in your life in order to be of service. Don't think too much about it. Instead, repeat the following and work your light activation I surrender to my awakening. I allow the kundalini energy to rise from the base of my spine and I open myself up to the universe. Using me in a way that delights my mind, body and spirit. So I say, are you ready to be happy? Yeah, Bella, I don't even know what happened. No, that's not the question. That's not being prepared. This is what the Holy Spirit's saying. Your, your awakening is happening. Be kind to yourself. 
Everything's working out in the perfect time, space and sequence for you. All you have to do is say no that to whatever irks your spirit. Regardless of anything else, that's it. That's why we're looking into, um, you know, being assertive. That the first thing is to know what is your primary clear. So you have a GPS inbuilt system. What is, there's four ways to pick up the messages or five. God showed me last night. But there's four main ways, your clairs. So are you hearing, seeing, thinking and feeling? A lot of you on the channel here are clairsentient. You feel it first. So that's your primary clair. That's how you're assertive. You will just go on that. Initially, you will stick up for it. Like that's your inner child saying, I don't like that. Don't ignore that ever again. And you'll say to your inner child, every time you do that, I'm not going to ignore you. I'm not going to put anybody above you. I'm going to chuck the tantrum and I'm going to speak up if I have to and I'll get better at it. <laughs> go collective. So the inner child grows up and starts feeling trusted, right? Because the niggling is the inner child. You don't want to be with even a partner or even in a room where your inner child is so uncomfortable. I know so many people that work, have jobs that their inner child just would never want to go into those premises. And yet they drag them there every day and tell them to be quiet, sit up. It's exactly the same as your parenting what, that you experienced. This is why we're breaking that. That's why that's over. And you go to your inner child's the most important thing now. You go, listen, my inner child needs some fun. I've got to get out of this place. <laughs> See you guys later. In fact, she needs a, a bit of a holiday or he. So it's tending to that inner child to build the trust, the relationship that you won't let them down. You won't put them in the corner. And then they grow into the teenager. And this is the awakening is the teenager energy. I've been talking about that a lot. Oh, God has. <laughs> the teenager Right now, very assertive, not getting drunk or having promiscuous sex. <laughs> so what are you doing? You're like, well, I'm creating, I'm channeling the energy. I'm receiving the downloads and then I'm channeling it. And the most beauty is going to come out of this. This is like a birthing. This is like a coral spawning of the ocean. And this has never happened before, God's sake. It's a once in a lifetime experience because his glory is being um, disp we're in a dispensation of his glory. It's the opening of the cosmic heart. Devotion, potency, make your life a moving prayer. Oh. So whatever's most potent takes over any other um, element. The potent element takes over. So we've got light and it will take over the darkness. Listening to your call, I'm telling you, you're being called. You will meet earth angels in this time frame. You will astral travel. You will actually have vivid, like I call them when people present. Right. So if you have a divine counterpart or if you have someone who's going to link up with you, in the future you're going to get a premonition about it. You're going to get a download. So when it turns up in your environment, in your reality, there's a resonance there that it's okay because you had to be... HSP, you had to be highly sensitive, you had to be highly emotional, that was the um, drawing card that you had to have to go on this mission so that you could pick up these things, so that you could pick up your clairs, your guidance, but you're the one who puts the destination in the GPS. So this is a calling of the collective, an awakening of a collective at the cosmic heart level. That's the heart space. Well, that's where you really... After your inner child's happy, the heart then starts to heal. And if the heart can heal, there'll be no illness or dis-ease. Right? Dis-ease, lack of ease in the body. Lack of life force. Wow. That was painful. That's what I got from that. Rock bottom, surrender to the alchemy of life. It's like being reborn from the phoenix. Like you thought you were smashed down, you're not. You're being rebuilt in this moment. And you're moving into a supernatural energy, which means what you think about, you're creating instantly. So be very careful. Be prepared for good things. Lift your energy to the vibration of happiness. Getting to know yourself. What could I do right now to make me feel more loved? 
What could I do right now? What could I say, think or feel? You have the power over these, this um, moment of now. You have the power over now. You were cracked open for a reason. You know when you're like in pain like that and then your heart is and you want to howl and the pain is so intense? It's actually when God's doing what he calls a works in you because that had to be let out because where you're going is more powerful than you can even believe. That's why your soul decided to take on this mission. You have to trust your soul, if nothing else. You know, my soul thought it was a really good idea to be down here and to be still down here and to have stayed here and look what's coming and look what's around me. And I'm in a snake pit. Why did I want to do that? And that's all done to break all the fear from your body, all the memory codes so they don't exist anymore. And then you're anchoring down something different. So I want you to say, well done to yourself. You could even look back on yourself and give yourself a hug. Tell yourself who was going through this. You did so well. I mean, I see videos back of me years ago and I go, good on you, love. Just keep going. I go, I don't know what I was doing. I was just trying to get present and grounded because half the battle's over. You cannot receive this guidance if you're in your mind, in the matrix. You can't receive it if you're like under stress and anxiety and worry and doubt and fear. We love this. There's a meditation on the blue flame from Archangel Michael. But this would be your person, spontaneous awakening, activation, integration time. So this is the same thing that happens in Reiki. This is what's taught me because we have a, a symbol that takes out time and space. So I had to get my head around it. It's not easy. It's the mental body that we're working on to upgrade here. Not going into the mind valley, going to mindlessness and letting your creator come in. So the blue flame is here. This is the activation, the awakening. Like people are going to activate like, um, you know, even like dominoes, like one after the other after the other. <clears throat> so this blue flame, as I said, we have rays and flames in the new earth and that's how we heal. So the blue flame is a, a flame of transfiguration. And this has transformed things that would normally, normally, I don't know what to say normally, but things that happen in the 3D time frame would take normally, you know, a month can happen in moments. This is proof of it here. This is a soul activation here of your person. It's almost like when it released from you, it activated them. The pain when it released here. They couldn't stand in it. They've got an easier. They've got it easier, a little bit easier. Yeah, they remember. Oh, isn't that amazing? I remember the soul plan. The fated life versus the destiny life. I'm telling you. This is amazing. Is this the right book? Uh, is this the right book, brother? We've got to start out with the right book there, Star Seeds. We've got Star Seeds here, the Star Seed Oracle by Rebecca and Danielle, I think it is. And it's I Remember. So this is huge. How long does it take, right, to download a whole new program on the computer? Well, what you first have to do is shut the whole computer down and take out, make some room. It's best. Because if you keep all the programs open and then you're downloading a new program, what happens? You risk the computer crashing. If you liken this upgrade here, this is like a new RAM drive, right? Whatever. <laughs> Some of you do computers. I know, I'm not good at it. But I remember. It's number 76. So then they know who you are. Now, the GPS then starts saying, go this way, go that way. That's why you must listen to you. And if you're the clairsentient, that's clear feelings. And then you will get another clair. We've got four. So then you've got to find out your second clair. This helps your assertiveness because you go, did I get a backup? Or am I just, because otherwise you think, oh, I'm just going off that because I am too emotional. La, 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 la. It's like, no, you get a feeling and then you get another one. You either hear something, clairaudience clairvoyance, you'll see something, your second clair will activate. 
and give you the same message but in the, the different Claire. Does that make sense? Or Claire cognizance is different. Something that you just know. You don't know how you know it. You just know you know it. Like we're not going that way. I don't want to go that way. I'm not going there. I just know I'm not. So don't try to talk me into it. There was a moment before you were born when you chose the conditions of the life you're living right now. When you plotted out these exact moments along the timeline of your life. We live in a world of free will and therefore these moments become our destiny only through saying yes. The fated life is the one we were born into. The destiny life is the one our soul chooses and it takes courage and faith. You pulled this card, it's because you're likely now face to face with the choice to follow the destiny Life over the fated life. Destiny over fate. To trust that path your soul is calling you toward and to remember that this moment was prearranged in your life's timeline. I'm reading it because this is what I'm trying to say to you because I, this is what I'm getting, but they say it better. And it's an activation of a knowingness. A lot of you are clear cognizant. So when you get a, a hit that's a feeling and then you get it backed up with something you hear and then you see a symbol of it, then you just know. So you've got to have all four cylinders going. You're a Maserati. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. But the Claire's are your four cylinders. One will fire up first. Get to know which one that is or join the assertiveness program that we're running. That's the first, first lesson is to know yourself really. Heal the child, self-parent, self-care. Then open your heart and listen. Let Jesus have your heart and give it, make it from stone to flesh. We'll help. He's the one who paid the price so you could forgive and be free. So give it to him. And then what happens is there's space for the download and the activation is supernaturally quick. We've got eternity coming in to invade your time. You're being invited to remember your soul's greater plan and to surrender to it. When you're confronted with a path that's unidentified, it's normal for doubt to rear its head. In fact, this is a certain sign that you are facing your soul's greatest plan. Every hero in his or her life journey comes eye to eye with doubt. The only way around this is through it. It's all part of the larger plan. What are you being called to do? To surrender to your soul's plan. This is what I'm getting. It's like you have to believe in at least that your soul thought it was a good idea. The first thing in my awakening was like, let's sit down and have a meeting here because I'm not getting this. Like, I know you think it's a good idea to be here and I know, Jesus, I'm here for you. So I had a meeting with my soul and Jesus got to sit down and you sit and listen. And what I got from it was that my little pea brain can't even comprehend. I can't even comprehend how magnificent it is. I can't even like, and then that's when I was going, oh, who do I think I am? I just got to believe. That's why he says, just believe. It's like, honestly, my soul wouldn't have done this if there wasn't the biggest reward ever. You got to believe that. You got to believe. <laughs> Look at that. That's where you were. Yuck. You were in the cosmic womb. That's where you were. That's when God's doing a works in you. <gasps> Hallelujah. We've got a beautiful, I didn't even see that. Thank you very much from the U.S., We've got a um, super chat. Super chat's open. I forget we're live here, live and interactive. It's good to see you, to feel your energy, right? Because you're clear sentient. So you're not too emotional. That's your kick ass satellite dish. That's your radar system that can tell that this person lacks integrity, that they're not, their words are not matching their intention. And there's no second guessing it. I remember. I've worked with Kuthumi. I am a keeper of the flames. I am a bringer of compassion. Working with Kuan Yin. And then you've been in incarnations with Yeshua or Yahusha or Yaho. So let's have a little snapshot here. We need some loving. We need some loving coming in. The blue flame of transfiguration. This is like 
activation, spontaneous, right? Got to be ready. Spontaneous combustion of the blue flame, transfiguration, going into the soul's remembrance. Once this is received, look out, world. You got the light workers, right? Then the indigos. And the crystal children. And the rainbow children. Look what they've done with the rainbow children. So disgusting, Mundo. They took the indigo out of the rainbow children. So the rainbow children are under attack severely because there's no indigo in the fake flag. That means there's no connection to God. That means there's no indigo. Oh. And then come the diamond babies. All right, so you must have the inverted opposite. That's why they call them the black-eyed babies. There's always, we're living in duality. We must expect it now. So you go, oh, that's good. A whole lot of glory coming from God and supernatural power and la, 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 la. It's like you've got to hold that down in a valley of darkness. It will overcome the light. The light will overcome the darkness, though. But you get mind controlled and tricked that it won't. And it goes back to your childhood where you thought you were told you can't do that. Or that's not possible. Or just be seen and not heard. Some of you are actually, you know, have, well, I think all of us experience some degree of emotional neglect. Or your needs weren't met. And now you're meeting them. Now you're in a child's getting heard and seen and celebrated and loved. Ah, oh, look. So it's the integration of the inner child. Right, then the heart, then in you know, the omnipresent moment of now. So sort of three steps. And this person will never let go of you, I just heard. This is never going to, this isn't like a push-pull. This isn't like a, oh, they ghosted me. I got a message from the father. If they ghosted you, let them go. That means they weren't serious about you. So it doesn't matter how many readings you go to, how many times you go, oh, I wonder what he's doing. It's like those readers that read that energy, that pulls them out of their own alignment. And it's deliberate. So you don't want to be pulled out of it. That's all I'm saying. So you don't jump the fence. You don't go to the other side of the tennis court here. You must ace it here. Stay on your side of the court. Back to me. Is this working for me or is this not working for me? And how will you know? Your primary Claire will tell you. You go, well, I got this niggling feeling. And then I heard somebody else talk about it. Right? And then I thought, you know, that's just not me. I'm not like that. So that must be a projection. So then you start knowing. And then you could pray and ask for a sign. You say, Archangel Michael. You say, Heavenly Father, who are you closest to? You're bringing in a new reality here. It's going to be better than you can even imagine. So this is why we have to lift our imagination. And if someone goes, are you ready to be healed? You go, yeah, that's prepared. I already feel the healing. I already feel like a millionaire. I already, already feel free. I already feel loved. I already feel like I'm in that yummy space of romantic love. <laughs> Listen to Bella. Grab it on, grab it on. No, we don't want weight. This is you in the past. Don't rush into anything. Allow nature to take its course. The bee. <laughs> the bee. I've got a download about the bee. I'll share that at the members lounge. Also about the missing children. God's given me downloads about what's happening on the macro. If you would like to join us there, I think it's very important. We also keep his feast days. Look, wait. You're trying too hard. That's the past and the present. And then look. There's nothing stopping you. So it goes from like freeze frame, suspended animation, waiting. In that waiting time, that's what I was telling you about, it's so difficult because all your insecurities come up. And that's where impatience will take over. It doesn't matter, I'll just ring them. Oh, it doesn't matter, I'll just sort this out. It's like you're being the scrub turkey in your own garden. But if you wait, look, pops through that. This is, this is the gestation the birthing of the Twin Flame Sacred Heart Union. Da -na -na -na. That's it. It's here. It's 
coming into your physical reality. That's why you have to create the space. So your inner child can't be holding any resentment or pain. And that's a lot when we're in the third generation of abuse. We're in the third generation of narcissistic abuse. So that's a strong DNA. And then there's also been the nurture where you watch it and it's reflected back at you. So you either become who you, like, you know, you either become the perpetrator and you do the same thing that you saw because you saw it flip reflected, it's in your programming. And then, or you break it. Most people are repeating it. I shouldn't say that, most people. But a lot of people are just repeating it. They're not seeing it. They're not knowing that they are the ones who break it. They're becoming perpetrators themselves. They haven't found Jesus, that's why. You need supernatural power to break that. That's a curse. Look at these two. I love you. No, I love you. <laughs> I love you. No, I love you. What's the outcome? Oh, far out, hey? Again, this is sacred. Can't have any leeches. God's going, you were talking about leeches. I said, I know, I mean spiritually. <laughs> Guys, explain it. It's like when people have cords attached to you. You can't have any, I've never seen this before, this out, this outcome here. Look. You can't have any cords attached to the past, to the lower vibrations. So the false belief about blood is thicker than water, I have to be loyal to my own. They have to break. Jesus said, do you love them more than me? Then you can't come with me. <laughs> it's so beautiful, the flame. Oh, so stunning. This activates the kundalini. And yes. And I must congratulate my masters who are in the diamond fire. We're at diamond fire. That's the highest I've ever been. Diamond fire. We were in sacred flames and rays, and now we're going to the fire, the diamond fire. So amazing, the technology that's available. And you say, what are you talking about, Bella, flames and rays? It's like, well, it gets rid of the leeches that I see, the spiritual leeches that are in your energy field, in your auric field, and then it heals the wounds and transmutes the cells of the body, the memory codes, it lifts up the crystals. And they're released. It's so amazing. So then pain pain leaves your body. I'm going to do a little snapshot here because we've had kind donations. And I want to thank you all for your kind support. It means a lot to me. And those who have blessed me at PayPal and um, buy me a coffee. Things like that. And know that you can get your private reading. It's open. You book in the calendar. So you've got to scroll down to the calendar past reviews. After you go to Psychic Readings, free upgrade. Da -da -da -da. What happens is that thing ma things manifest a lot faster, as I said. So this is, uh, you cannot afford the luxury of a negative thought at the moment. Because it's your, it's the free will. The free will from fate to destiny. What was fated is for you to repeat the pattern of abuse. So you're going into destiny where it's never been done before. You're going into a relationship without the old patterns, without whatever the false beliefs were, without the forms of abuse being repeated. The angel of the Lord appeared. You do have guardian angels around you that are assigned to you, that can watch over you 24-7. You're not alone. So ask for an encounter. Ask for their name. It's good to get your um, guardian angel's name. Now, a lot of the time, guardian angels, I mean, all the time, your guardian angel has passed over before you were born, but they are in your bloodline. So it would be a great, great auntie or great, great grandmother. And there's often a namesake involved. Right, so my guardian angel is my grandmother's mother. And her name was what I was called as a child. So I have her gold nameplates as a child. And that's what my family used to call me. That was her real name, but mine was a nickname. 
Just letting you know that. So that might be the same with you. Think of the name. So this has been orchestrated, these two cups. This is an alignment in heaven. And what is it? This is underneath the Ace of Cups. This is the birth of new love. This is the love vibration. You've got to think this doesn't exist here. You're bringing it. You're bringing love. We're not looking for it anymore. We're connecting to our soul star and to the heavenly realms to bring down the glory and bring it through an open heart with a happy inner child so that the teenager can now create without any obstruction, like without anything hindering you. So here comes this message. This is the guy that sings in the forest, a falsetto, if you like, and all the animals come out to see where's the prince going, the prince of love. He stops and tells them, i got a plan. Yep. i got a plan because I just stood in my truth today. I've had a serious activation and all that stuff, right, that was pulling this person back from the past has been let go. Like there's no guilt. There's no shame. So this may be your person, but they sat in it for a very long time. This is a whole month sitting in the shame and the guilt like you have to sit in it for it to be released. Some people, well, that's the fate. You're looking at that, that doesn't suit me. It's unreal that it doesn't suit you. But you make it mean that it's bad. It's like, no, it's great because you're leaving fate and you're going into your destiny. So it's good that the fate looks bad. But when you're in it, you think it's poor me. This isn't happening. That's what I'm saying. It's coming in today. This is today. News on the way today. It's already been received in the telegram in the heavens. Look, the angel has sent the message. <laughs> so you need to just be at the right place at the right time. So you could affirm that. You go, I'm always in the perfect time, space and sequence for me. I'm listening to my, you've got to set the GPS for happiness that my joy may be full. And then sit back and follow the guidance. There's a lot of guidance here. <laughs> There's a lot of guidance there's a sevenfold instructions to leave earth, God's saying, to get to new earth. It's sevenfold. Here you've got eight, you've got an eightfold instruction. And this has all been accumulating behind the scenes because of the work you've done, because of the tears you cried, because of the howling, because of the, like, you just saw people, like, they're so mean and unkind. And the world's going crazy town. And then you're like, well, how come I'm here? Because you're here to be loved, to fall in love. And here it is. Holy Spirit of God, <laughs> who we receive through the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, through Jesus. We're just going to ask here, what's this pentacle? There's a page of pentacles. So this is an invitation. This is just... Um, this, this page is very curious, right, to know everything about you. This page realizes that they don't even know. I said this to in a reading yesterday. I said, well, you know, how well does this person know you? Do they ask about what your favorite color is, what your favorite food is? You know, like this, this person's interested in you. And these are all the questions they want to know now. They go, what's your favourite colour? Like when they're really interested you, in you, when they're serious about you, when they have feelings towards you. They want to know everything about you. And you look back to your past relationship, you go, like that person didn't even know what, you know, they're buying me flowers, but they didn't know what my favourite flower was. So it wasn't about me. Like they gave me jewellery or they gave me this, but it wasn't like, what was your favourite? It wasn't to please me. It was more about to make them feel good, to make them, you know, not feel like this is toxic gift giving I'm getting that you've had in the past. That has to go. You can't bring that forward. Like, what do they want from me? You know, when you try to help somebody, you try to help the narcissist, they're like, what do you want? It's because they wouldn't give anything just out of the kindness of their heart. They would only give it to get something back. So now they're suspect on you because why are you being so kind? What do you want? And now you're getting their stuff projected onto you. I've seen it so many times. And especially if you are clairvoyant, right, and you're very intuitive or a high priestess, they say, people get upset 
especially if they're in your soul tribe, your fated people, right? They're like, oh my gosh, can she see what I did last summer? It's like, no, I can't see what you did last summer, but now you're acting so up so much, right, that you're being so weird that in the past I would think there was something wrong with me, but now I realise, what are you hiding? Maybe I will go into it. Thanks for the heads up. See how it's different in your energy. The Holy Spirit's saying, are you ready for a miracle? Yeah, Bella, I'm ready. You ready? So I've got that song for you on the community tab, so we'll sing it together after this. <laughs> Even if all hope seems lost, let not hope slip away, for I, your guardian angel, am constantly by your side. Surrender all your concerns to me and trust in the healing power of love. Please believe that you are never alone. Together we shall work through each issue or situation which is of concern to you. All heads with all heels with the passing of time. Magic and miracles are about to manifest. So you've got to start saying that or affirming it or getting ready and the peaceful mind will bring it to you a lot faster. You will soon enter a time of well-earned peace and tr tranquility. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. See, a miracle, we can't fathom a miracle. So if you've got to ask for a miracle, you've got to get out of the way. You can't think, like me, I was like, how would God, like, how would God do that? Like, how would God perform a miracle? I've just given away my problem. I gave it to the angels, take it up to Father. Right? I said, here you are, you have it. I'm not thinking about it anymore. I am done. I need a miracle. And we know from death to resurrection, three days. So you're not allowed to think about it anymore, Bella, And for three whole days. No worry, no doubt. You can't bring any negativity to it. I go, that's fine. Here you go, you have it. Three days, I'm fine. Two minutes later, I'm sitting there going, how would he do that? How could that happen? Or what if it doesn't happen? And what if I don't? And Jesus came in. Jesus that stood next to me, this wonderful, overpowering energy of love. And I heard the voice, because I'm clairaudient, say, are you worrying about how Father will create a miracle? I still didn't get it. I was like, yeah, that's me. I'm a warrior. My mum was a warrior. She used to say, let's ring mum and her mum, lest she be worried. I'm like, who's worried? Why is everybody worried around here? Like that was just how it was. You need to worry about things. So I will worry about just for another two minutes, Jesus, and then I'll be finished. He's like mental illness. And I was like, oh. And then I got it. I was like, oh, oh my little pea brains thinking about how Father's going to create a miracle. And I've asked him for the miracle so I don't have to worry because I need a miracle. So we're going to say from today, no worry, doubt or fear on anything. You cast that burden on the Christ within and you go free. Every time it comes in, don't sit down like me. Start worrying. You brought it all back. He said, we've got to start again now. Are you ready? I'm like, oh, I've just wasted an hour. You've got to wait three days maximum. It can happen in a moment. So let's give it away. Your big problem, I want you to see it there in your hands. Just put it there in your hands. This is my problem. I give it to you, guardian angel. Take it to the Father as I await my miracle. And now it's the mind space that you can't think about it, you can't put any negativity on it. It's gone. And look what happens. An invitation comes through and then it's like, so what's your favourite this? What's your favourite that? Where would you like to go? La, 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 la. Have a little look here. There's eight truths going to come out of this guy's mouth. Because you're still here, I'm just going to do a little snapshot here on what is the Page of Pentacles and the Eight of Wands. So this is different. This is coming out of left field. This is out of nowhere. This is manifesting out of nothing. Nowhere. There's the hermit. He's found his star. This is the divine masculine energy. His heart's opened. He's feeling things he has never felt. Everything you said to him was true, came true. Everything you said came true. He's like, how does she know that? And now he wants peace. But it's not peace at any price. He wants peace and love. So he's a man who's not ever felt love before. 
And really, who has until you meet Jesus, until you get that agape love and your heart is healed? You can't. He's always been confused. He didn't know what love was. So it was only on the outside. He picked everything on the outside. This is underneath hopes and fears. And then the outcome, he's put down that burden. And moving forward, look, six of swords. Like it's too much of a burden to be away from you. And, and people in the past, or even this energy in the past, are like, oh, it's too much of a burden to give up my whole life and, you know, too much of a burden to commit to you. Oh, this is just too much of a burden. And now it's too much of a burden to be without you. So love is definitely in the air. So if I say to you, you ready to meet your um, twin flame? You go, Bella, I haven't even met my twin flame. I mean, I don't even know. I mean, I thought it was, a... nah, we're not allowed to do that. Nah, that's not being prepared. That's not being ready. So we're going to test ourselves. We're going to give it away. No negative thought process about anything. You can say, I cast this burden on the Christ within and I go free. And then think about what's the best thing that could happen. What does my heart need to feel loved? What am my inner child like? Focus on those things. Get closer to your heart's desires. That's where God is. And then he'll show up for you. And he's saying the miracle's coming within three days maximum. It can happen in a moment. How long does it take? Not long. That's your preparedness, God's saying. So this person judged you. Like, you don't know me, but I don't wear shoes. <laughs> God show you. There was a person that I met. And I was wondering, what is wrong? God just showed me. He was like, because, you know, you don't wear shoes. And I go, oh, I understand that. Because I was brought up like, you know, you know you've got to wear shoes. My mum, you had to have shoes on. Oh, you were tardy? And it just hit me. I was like, oh, I have just lost. I had forgotten that belief. That's a false belief to me. I don't wear shoes because I'm connecting to the grid. I don't want to connect to 5G. I want to connect to the diamond core of the crystal grid, right? So you do that through your feet. So I haven't really worn shoes for seven years. Sometimes I take them. Sometimes I put them on to enter places. Anyway, this person judged me. So I was like tardy, like a homeless person. I was going, oh my gosh, I never got that. I only got it because I'm so detached now. And I was laughing going, oh yeah, I understand that. So being a Sagittarius, you could, like that's my thing. If I understand it, it's like I get that. Because that's a belief that I had growing up. So where have you been judging even yourself? I've learned to take that judgment off myself. I don't care. I do feel it with people, but I don't care. So there's things that you used to care about that now you don't care about. I, and this person is loves that about you. <laughs> he that believeth on me the works that I do, he shall do also and greater works than he shall he do because I go unto my father. What does that mean? Why should you do better works than Jesus because he goes to his father? What's that got to do with it? Somebody please tell me. I don't understand that one. But I'm asking for revelation through the Holy Spirit. Because I go unto my father. I don't understand that. If you get that, could you write it in the comments? Whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name, he will give it to you. No way! God said, yeah, my children aren't even asking me for the miracle. Anyway, they're not even anywhere near the request, the prayer requests are nowhere near what I have in store. So I'm going to have to lift them up with a frequency. I'm going to have to bring them in a little blessing, see what they do. I'll put $50 on their pathway, see if they go, oh, well, whose is that? And feel guilt and shame for picking it up instead of going, thank you, Father. And then more comes. I'm just using a bad example. You've got lots of things going on in your life. He just wants you to recognize it and say thank you and then more will come. That's how you get prepared. You get little bits along the way. Get as excited about finding five cents as you would $5,000. That's the trick. Because your subconscious mind is reacting to what you see. Whatsoever you shall ask. So what did you ask the father? That my joy may be full. That's what I keep getting. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Most people 
are either thinking about the past or worried about the future, putting worry energy in the future. Most people. And that's how you get depressed, disconnected between your crown chakra and your soul star and then medicated in your mind. So this is no thought for the morrow. Come back to now. Back to me. What do I need now? What's my GPS saying? Let me listen. Let me get this, disconnect these leeches from me. Anybody draining me? Let me cut these cords. Let me buzz myself up. Let me activate some life force. Let me ask Father to uplift my imagination to the point of the miracle so that I can receive it today. Not tomorrow, Jesus is saying. Not tomorrow. <laughs> ask and it shall be given to you. Not asking. Matthew 7, 7. This is right now. It's available. Heal the sick that are therein and say unto them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. There's no dis-ease in the kingdom. There's no dis-ease. It's just ease. There's no sickness. Heal your body. Heal your body. So you might be asking for healing. And it's according to your faith, be it unto you. We're having a story here, story time. So it's whatever you ask for, believing that you receive it. Lots of you need to heal. You need to heal your heart. You need to heal that pain or arthritis. Your body's screaming at you. We so ignore it. It happened to me that I was like, stupid hip, can you stop hurting? And then I was like, that's not very nice. I'm going to say, I can hear you. I got it. I know. Too many bagels. You're not even meant to be eating bagels. But anyway... That didn't work either. You've got to be sending love to your body. I said, I will think about my posture and I will exercise more often to help you out. I did hands on Reiki on. Instead of going, stop hurting. So funny what we do. And according to your faith, be it unto you. So how would you strengthen your faith today? So normally you, can get, you get faith strengthened. So you can receive your miracle. This is what God's saying. You didn't even ask for it. So instead of asking for the little things, just joy may be full. My inner child is healed. My heart is open to love and my perfect partner presents. And this is happening today in the now moment. So get ready all your favorite things. You don't have to talk about yourself. You're not used to doing that when you're HSP. You know, you know you're a bit shy. So this is a brand new beginning. Are you ready? Yes! My flame is lit and I am in the omnipresent moment of now, grounded. I let the past go and I keep moving forward. We release the past and let it go. The past has no power over us. Two or three agree in his name, there he shall be. May the Lord move in your life today with a miracle that makes you squeal with delight at that which is before you. If you need help in any way, look me up. I'm at reikibybella.com. I thank you very much again for your kind donations and for blessing me at PayPal and buy me a coffee. I love you. And um, all the extensions, we've got one more to go. You can purchase the whole lot of the extensions, which would be a journey in itself of healing and guidance. If you would so like to, it would be worth it. And you would get about eight of them free. But anyway, I thank everybody for supporting me there at the, the extensions. It's made um, <clears throat> the work flow, my channeling really flow. Because when you connect like that, I'm channeling then more and more for you. So I'm going to keep it going in another sense. Again, thank you for your support. And know that you, where you are, God shows 